well it's nice to be here and uh, old friend of aqua so very comfortable with many of the people here okay um what I'm going to talk about, I, I used to be, as he says, in the IT sector, and for the last eight years, I was running a foundation working on water and sanitation in India. And uh, so after I quit last year, my interest has been, uh, I've been thinking a lot about what I'd like to do next, and I decided to see how the two could be merged. So bringing technology into some of the more core problems that I've seen on the ground in India. So I'm talking with, uh, this isn't implemented yet, this is a new idea, I'm just in the very early stages, but I thought it was a good time to share with all of you and get feedback. Um, so it's called Gram Plan. Gram in India, the word Gram means village. So this is about rural uh, India. Um, so the rural governance challenge, there are many, many issues in uh, governance. Basically, across sectors, whether you're talking about education, health, livelihoods, housing, many, all of them seem to break down at the last mile. And it's a governance problem. The local government is where fails to deliver the service properly. So in India, you have three levels of government. You have the center, you have the state, and then you have the local governments. And gram, the word gram panchayat is, and I'll, I'll be using that a lot here, uh, is the third tier of government. And it's basically for a cluster of villages, for a small group of villages. And that is the problem where, uh, th that's the area where a lot of problems arise. And this is just to give you a sense, there are many HR-related problems, right? There are not enough human resources. There is a very weak citizen demand. Uh, there isn't enough training and skills. That's one set of problems. Another set is about you know, systemic challenges uh, with corruption, political interference, bureaucratic roadblocks, you know, things to actually which prevent uh, services from being delivered. But the last set of problems are to do with structural uh, problems, you know, with lack of data and information, weak feedback mechanism to the um, government, to the local <coughs> government, parallel bodies. So, you know, many times to implement schemes because people don't have faith that the local government can deliver it, parallel bodies are set up to actually deliver those services. So all of these serve to weaken the local government. Um, and, and so these are some of the challenges. Specifically, if you're talk, looking at data and information gaps, from, this is from the local government's point of view, right? So I'm, I'm, if with the local government's hat on, there are three types of problems. One is in the actual quality of data. So the integrity of the data. The quality of data is often very, very poor. And the relevance, it's not updated regularly, so it's not timely and the granularity. You need it at that, local, at that local granularity, but sometimes it's not granular enough. So this quality problem is accessibility. Uh, data tends to sit in departmental silos, so the education department has its data, health department has its data, and what really the local government needs is all of that for its local area. It doesn't need these siloed pieces of data. So that's another problem. And then, of course, the actual usability, because you don't, they don't have sufficient tools and resources and skills. The raw data is not very usable. So these are some of the data-related issues. So the big idea, the idea here, the core idea is to say, how can we improve ru rural governance through GP? GP is the word I was saying, Gram Panchayat, which is the local government. How can you improve that through Gram Panchayat reports? Right. Um, so, so to quickly explain, right, on the top left there is um, the GP report generation itself. So, looking at secondary data that exists already with the center and the state, uh, extracting out those data for a local for the local government, the Gram Panchayat, and generating a simple report that covers all the sectors of interest for that local government. So, it covers all the areas: from agriculture, health, education all of that, and creates one comprehensive report for that Gram Panchayat. On the other side, for the deployment, there are volunteers. Now again, I've been working with civil society a lot, and while they have the commitment and the passion to go deep to the ground, the problem is with scale. You don't have enough civil society organizations and members from civil societies to actually take it across the country. And the other thing is you can't, you don't have the the uh, ability to just do this completely online, just, just send reports online to the Gram Panchayat and hope that they will use it. You need a human connection. You need people to actually take the data down there. So my idea is to tap into this huge volunteer force. Um, 
India is growing a lot and you have a huge middle class these days, professional um, youngsters, people who are working in the professional sector, IT and corporate sector, um, who live in urban areas and who are all looking to give back in some small manner. The thing is they don't want to give up their whole lives and move to rural areas, but they would all like to volunteer in some small way. And there haven't been too many platforms for people to actually engage. So the idea is to create such a platform. So tap into, through corporates and volunteer agencies, tap into, mobilize volunteers who will take these Gram Panchayat reports, go down to the village, and there do a very simple a one day exercise to validate this data and update it. Because then that solves both your integrity problems and the relevance problem. And this updated report is taken both back to the GP and goes back to the central databases so that that data is updated. So this is the high level idea. GP reports that are generated from secondary data, existing data sets, taken down through volunteers to, gram to the local level, to the villages, and validated and updated there, the data. The reports go back to the Gram Panchayat who now have a report that is relevant to them consisting of all the data that they need, and the data goes back to the state for updation. Right? And what kind of data does it cover? Like I said, everything that's of relevance to a local government, education, health, uh, welfare. Uh, there are a lot of welfare schemes in India, housing, administration, roads. Um, Indian local governments are supposed to manage 29 functions, but these are some of the really key ones. So. This is what it would cover. And what would the report actually contain? The idea is beyond just the data about that local government, it would also have certain other components that would make it useful. A first is an analysis, right, of that data to say, you know, how does your gram panchayat compare with the neighboring gram panchayats? How does it compare with the state and the district level? How does it what are your priorities in your area? How are you doing, you know, which are the areas where you are performing most poorly? Which are the areas that you can afford to ignore now because you're doing quite reasonably? And visualizing all of this and showing it in a way that they can understand it, you know, can, can digest this information. And also a way for them to share it because Gram Panchayats, since it's a local, it's a democracy, it's a local government, they need to be able to convince their citizens so that, to, to, to make any intervention, to, to make their allocations of how they want to use their budget. So this would also be a tool for them to convince their constituencies, right? So the idea is to use very, you know, sim uh, simple visual, and you know, motivational, aspirational reports like this that can in a very powerful way convey what, are, what should be their priorities, what is their performance. On the volunteer side, like I was saying, at a very high level, it's about connecting people, right? Today, the divide is getting much broader in India. You have the urban, uh, the middle class and the rich who, are, who have tremendous opportunities and with IT and with education and employment opportunities, they are really rising up fast. And you have many, the poor, especially in the rural areas, who are getting left behind. And it's un unbelievable how the disconnect is kind of just widening. So this is a way really to, in to increase that human connect and to say that even if it's for a day or two, when people go down to the field and actually engage with a simple activity like taking a report, doing a quick survey, and then taking it back, that connect will start yielding a much tighter, you know, a, a hopefully a more, uh, you know, a better society in terms of people understanding what where the other group comes from. And uh, second, it also, it could be a mind, you know, a broadening experience for the volunteers who are in urban areas who are increasingly losing touch with the real, how 70% of the rest of the country lives. So that's the broad motivation. And to keep it in a way that they can actually engage, it will be on weekends, a one day or a two day exercise, and it will be on tablets and tools. So it's a quick, you know, the survey itself can be a very simple activity, the survey as in the, the data validation. And the, we will have to pair up volunteers so that they can understand the local language. So some of these logistics is what the volunteer platform will take care of, right? And make it very easy for them to sign up and coordinate. 
So the key thing about this, because several elements of this have already been happening in India for a while, right? So there have been surveys that have been done. There have been volunteers that actually go down and work on the field. What, what's different about this? One is that trying to look at rural governance, which is a very tricky issue. Governance is not really the most amenable for volunteers. Volunteers tend to go and work, you know, teaching children or do some easier activities like that. So trying to get volunteers into governance is, is one new area. And the second is this combination of offline and online. You're doing something completely online is a challenge because you, you can't really engage the local community. And if you do it completely uh, you know, offline, actually working on the field, you're not using the advantage of technology. So trying to use both, where some amount of the data, the report generation, visualization, data analysis, all of that happens online. The actual survey data validation on the field is offline. It goes back to do uh, report uh, generation and then when it goes back to the field, you can do it in terms of posters or local media. So doing this combination of you know, uh, online and volunteers to actually go down to the field, I think is what will really make this stick. And finally, to close, um, yeah, so the idea of Gram Plan now is, is basically helping a rural government to do planning and prioritizing better. Today, they don't have the tools. They have a lot of other issues, but one of the gaps is the lack of proper data that is relevant to them and that is usable by them. And using technology to leverage this and scaling it through urban volunteers and eventually through all of this, being able to address some of the core issues of transparency and productivity. Any questions? <laughs> uh, actually, there is. Um, I have. This is very early stages. I haven't really. T you know. We, I mean, I've shared the idea with Thomas and Peter. There's no immediate fit, but I think that the ideas are very similar. So apart from the learning, uh, you know. Um, there is no immediate you know, match. Okay. One second, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Sunita. What I like very much in your approach is that you are not just considering leveraging through technology, but in fact what you are doing is leveraging through the people. Mm. And this is the, the only way to get really large scale things happening is mm. to build on the, the capacity of the people and giving them the technology, but not just dumping the technology and hoping that for the best. Yeah. So thank you for mentioning it because often it's forgotten. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, we've tried enough of the other way and it, it doesn't work. You just, yeah, you can. This side. Oh no, I just want to say thank you very much. Very promising. And one remark I would like to, you know, maybe discuss later with you is how we make the link how the volunteer will be going back in the field. Mm. Because this is a part which is very costly. Mm. in most of the interventions. What, what is very costly? Uh, bringing the volunteer yeah. going back to the field right. often. This right. is m the part which is more co yeah, costly yeah, yeah. and demanding a lot of resources. And how are we going to handle this part? Although they are volunteers, they don't want anything, but right. at least they right. might need transportation, exactly. you know, paying for their cell phone, mm. all those kind of things. Absolutely. It's why you are having most of the challenge in the field, even with right. the civil servant as right. well. Right, right. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly take that for a minute. Um, my idea is, I didn't talk about it here, but my idea is to approach corporates and uh, create packages for them because co today with the uh, co CSR laws are changing in India and making it more mandatory for uh, companies to ensure that a certain amount of money uh, goes to the field. So create packages for them to say, so many of your employees, so much money can be used to cover so many gram panchayats. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and so use, you know, so go pitch it to them and so that they provide some of the funding for this. Yeah.